Over the past couple of years, Sony has managed to become almost synonymous with noise cancelling technology, a feat once held by other companies like Bose. From its cozy design to excellent sound quality and most importantly the industry-leading noise cancellation, 2018's WH-1000XM3 still stands out as one of the best Bluetooth headphones you can buy. And a couple of months ago, the company brought its successor. The new Sony WH-1000XM4 builds on the XM3 by bringing a couple of subtle yet necessary changes. So how has Sony managed to outdo itself with the XM4? Allow me to discuss that in this review. But before that, let me quickly give a shout out to our sponsor Download4.cc. Download4.cc is the one-stop destination for all your video and music download needs. It is fast, safe and more importantly completely free. Just copy and paste the link of the video or music you wish to download and that's it. It's that easy. Or you can even type in the name of the file in the field and it automatically shows you downloadable results from hundreds of sources. Download4.cc supports all major video and audio streaming platforms like YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, Instagram and even TikTok. There is no unwanted watermark on the downloaded video and you can even choose from different file formats. So next time you need to save videos or music for offline use, be sure to check out Download4.cc. For further information, you can check the link given in the description. Anyway, let's get on with the review. Starting with the design, Sony hasn't made any major revision in terms of how the XM4 looks and feels in comparison to the XM3. It has a premium plastic build with soft, comfortable ear cups while also being pervious to sweat and water damage. Likewise, XM4's ear cups are incredibly plus and offer a tight fit. The headband could still use a little bit of work though. They are a bit narrow and its padding is also considerably tighter to my liking. As a result, I often found myself adjusting the headphones on my head every now and then. Because of that, you can also feel this mild yet consistent degree of pressure and stiffness resulting in a fatigued wearing experience in the long run. I did try adjusting the length of the headband for a better fit, but losing the firmness turned out to be an even worse trade-off over the minimal discomfort. But before you get any wrong idea, let me reiterate that the degree of discomfort was always marginal to begin with. And if you're someone who's used to these kinds of headphones, the Sony WH-1000XM4 should feel right at home. Moving on, it is available in either black or silver color options, just like its predecessor. With its overall matte finish and gold accented Sony logos on either side, these headphones gracefully matched my style too. Pairing the XM4 with your device is fairly smooth. Equipped with Bluetooth 5.0, all you've got to do is press the dedicated power button for a couple of seconds to turn it on and then follow the due diligence to get it working with your device. And if your phone supports NFC, connecting the XM4 is even more seamless. Additionally, there's also a 3.5mm auxiliary port for a wired connection. From the higher bandwidth to low latency audio streaming to all the other advantages, most of the times I went down the wired route. Likewise, it also brings one of the most demanded features which was not there in its predecessor, multipoint connection. You can now simultaneously pair these headphones to two devices at once and seamlessly switch between them. I must admit, I found it to be more useful than I'd presumed. During work, I tend to stream my tunes from my laptop, therefore I connected the XM4 to my laptop while also connecting it to my phone. However, the multi-device connection does come at a sacrifice of LDAC codec as both devices default to AAC streaming at this setting. Besides the power button, there's also a custom button which was labeled NC slash ambient on the XM3. Frankly speaking, calling it custom feels like a bit of a reach because all you can do is set it to either trigger ambient sound control, Google Assistant or Amazon Alexa. Anyway, the touch control works well once you get the hang of it. But I would say that the control feels slightly off sometimes. Unfortunately, the touch sensor is non-functional when connecting it via the 3.5mm jack. Now, let's talk about the noise cancellation properties of the XM4. Equipped with the same QN1 HD noise cancelling processor as its predecessor, it's no wonder why people love this thing so much. For the best noise cancelling experience, Sony recommends you optimize it to the way you put on the headphone and a couple of other factors like atmospheric pressure. 
All you've got to do is long press the custom button for a couple of seconds or use the app to begin the optimization process and the whole operation is completed within 10 seconds. In any case, XM4 noise cancellation is top notch. It obviously cannot block all the noise signals and works best against consistent low and mid frequency ambient sound. But once you turn on some music at a respectable volume, the headphone then takes you into your own blissful realm, void of any disturbances from the outside. Under a regular setting like a living room with a TV running in the background, people talking etc, the XM4 manages to keep things excellently quiet while I could faintly hear the TV program or the ongoing conversation. Yet once again, play some tunes and it's all gone. Almost. I also took a stroll with the XM4 where construction work was going on to know the extent of noise cancellation. However, the sound coming from the pitching machine dominated my listening experience while the sound of bike horns distinctively made their way into the headphones as well. Other ambient sounds such as uh, people talking were practically imperceptible though. Moving on, the Sony WH-1000XM4 is blessed with a bunch of ways noise cancelling works on this headphone. First off, there's this thing called adaptive sound control that dynamically lets in different levels of ambient sound depending on your frequent location. I particularly didn't find it to be very useful as I don't uh, travel around much these days, but if you are someone who can make use of it, this is a very nice feature to have. Another headlining feature of the XM4 is called Speak to Chat, which works exactly how it sounds. It detects when you start speaking and turns off the music while letting in ambient sound. Now let's get to the quality, and even though the XM4 is a noise cancelling first headphone, the audio quality from it is equally spectacular. It has the same 1.7 inches circumeral driver with aluminium coated LCP diaphragm with 4Hz to 40kHz of frequency response. Likewise, it also supports DSEE Extreme for upscaling compressed digital music files in real time. I tried uh, streaming music from YouTube, Spotify, my local MP3 and FLAC audio files and frankly, I could not tell the difference between DSEE Extreme on and off. The XM4 also supports Sony 360 Reality Audio technology and the company even provides one year's free subscription code inside the box. Unfortunately, I could not experience this feature because it is only available in a couple of streaming services like Deezer, Tidal, Nox.net and I don't have a subscription to any of those. In any case, it is a decent pair of headphones for audiophiles. However, you might be disappointed to know that unlike the XM3, the XM4 does not support Qualcomm's aptX and aptX HD audio. Anyhow, the default audio profile of the XM4 was a bit distasteful for me. So using the Headphones Connect app, I went on to tweak the equalizer setting. After messing around with it for a while, I was finally happy with the excited preset with clear bass dialed down to plus 6. It can produce rambling bass that's hard not to like. The vocal and instrumental separation is excellent as well and the mids and highs are no slouch either. However, there is some distortion in higher frequencies when cranking the volume to 80% or louder. And oh, I almost forgot to mention, there's a sensor on the left ear cup of the headphone which detects whether you've put the headphones on or not. Now getting to the battery, the XM4's endurance remains the same as its predecessor. Sony says these headphones can last up to 30 hours with noise cancelling turned on and 8 more hours with noise cancelling off. During my test, I got around 20 to 22 hours of listening time, listening at around 70% volume most of the time with AAC codec, DSEE Extreme on and most of the time with noise cancellation turned on as well. It also supports a quick charge feature that can get you 5 hours of juice with just 10 minutes of charging. It takes around 2 hours and 28 minutes to fully juice up the headphone via the USB-C cable. Wrapping it all up, the WS-1000XM4 once again cements Sony's dominance in the noise cancellation industry. It improves on the already impressive headphones and brings some subtle yet quality of life improvements that many would appreciate, including me. All in all, it's a solid pair of headphones that offers best-in-class noise-free listening experience at a premium price. So that was all for our review of the Sony WS-1000XM4. Which accessory would you like us to review next? Do let us know in the comments below. Till then, I'm Pratima Adhikari and thank you so much for watching.